Namaste and uh, hearty welcome to all the participants of uh, Easy Ayurveda Gurukula, episode uh, 17. On behalf of uh, Easy Ayurveda, I extend uh, a cordial welcome to all of you. And uh, today's uh, guest speaker, Dr. Prasanna Karpunjay, sir, is uh, there with us. So on behalf of all of us, I kindly give a warm welcome to Prasanna Karpunjay, sir, to Gurukula session. Namaste and uh, welcome, sir, on behalf of Easy Ayurveda. Before I hand it over to uh, Prasanna, sir, uh, for uh, today's session, today's very interesting topic, rather than uh, a topic, it is uh, an experience-based uh, presentation by Sana Karpande, sir. He'll be taking us through the journey and uh, touching various facets of Ayurveda uh, and uh, the challenges and also uh, opportunities uh, related to Ayurveda. So introducing uh, Dr. Sana Karpande, sir, uh, has completed his uh, graduation from ALM Rao Ayurvedic Medical College, uh, Kupa in Karnataka, and uh, has uh, a post-graduation degree in uh, Thai Chikitsa from the Government Ayurvedic uh, Medical College, Mysore, again, uh, Karnataka. So, sir has uh, sir is active in academics and uh, clinical services for the past uh, two decades or so. That's a vast journey, and the journey is successfully going on. So, some uh, part of the professional journey includes uh, being Ayurveda consultant and uh, assistant uh, spa manager at Viventa by Taj Bekal. I uh, was also associate professor uh, in post digestion department of Kai Chikisa at AL and Rao Ayurvedic Medical College, uh, Kupa, Ayurvedic consultant at uh, Oriental Spa and uh, Ayurveda Penthouse of Mandarin Oriental Bank of Thailand. So, visiting uh, consultant for Amrita Siddhi Ayurveda Health Center in Ubud, Pali, Indonesia, and uh, currently consultant for uh, Gamyam Retreat at uh, Kumta, Karnataka. So, sir has penned down uh, Ayurveda Simplified, a book. So which is, uh, as uh, the title itself uh, suggests, Ayurveda has been presented in a simplified way through his experience. And currently, uh, Prasanna Karpunji sir is uh, working as consultant, Karpunji Wellness, Moodbidri, Karnataka. So this is a short intro of uh, our uh, guest speaker with a vast uh, knowledge and experience in academics and also in clinical practice uh, and also wellness. So today's topic is very interesting for all of us. I think we'll enjoy the session. The topic of today will be Ayurveda beyond borders. That itself makes uh, uh, a topic for interesting discussion, seizing opportunities and overcoming challenges in a global global uh, landscape. Without wasting any time, I hand it over to uh, Prasanna Kapuja sir to take it over. Uh, namaste and welcome once again and uh, all over to you, Prasanna sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh for the elaborate uh, introduction. I would like to start with a shloka, a dhyana. Akhanda mandala karam vyaptam yena chara charam tatpadam darshitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha ajnanati mirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namaste to all. Even though Dr. Pragram sir has given me an elaborate uh, description, I'll just uh, take you through a little bit of background why i am talking about this about the topic of global scenario opportunities and the challenges in my journey as a consultant spa consultant wellness consultant and ayurveda teacher and definitely a continuous ayurveda student continual student of ayurveda still learning and understanding how we can implement it in our lives because ayurveda is all about living it it's not about medicine it's not about you no know, teaching it's about living it so in that passion and uh, in that uh, curiosity i'm still a student learning so many things and i know m most of you agree with this so in that journey when i was trying how we can popularize ayurveda because it has been there for quite a few thousands of years five thousand six thousand we give different numbers but still a lot of Ayurveda doctors ourselves, we are not confident in the science and we ourselves don't use it properly and we don't know how to use it properly. And fortunately, unfortunately, uh, we, don't, we, we don't want to blame anyone, but uh, it's even uh, like there are missed links from the Gurukula system. And so we don't have proper guru uh, who can teach us and show us exactly how to implement it and what exactly 
acharyas have told us so we all are kind of in a lab experimenting on ourselves and on our patients or on a, on the public with our whatever the knowledge we have gained and uh, implementing it and even with that uh, a portion of ayurveda which we are using till we are successfully treating so many cases and uh, a lot of people getting benefit of it but still then our own doctors i have come across a lot of doctors who don't have confidence in ayurveda they keep blaming the science it's not the science which is at fault but it's our systems and you know the political system maybe administrative system maybe and uh, all the lost uh, details and co- connections from the past practices and uh, gurus so that is at fault so where we are heading we are competing with the medical science modern medicine or the western medicine and then we are n- not retaining our originalities and we are not able to cope with that competition because ayurveda is not meant to be another alternative medical system ayurveda has a different approach different you know theory background purpose everything is there so swastha se swasthya rakshanam from there it starts and half of the science is talking about how to prevent diseases and how to live a life fulfill the life we are living how to be healthy and happy in the first place and then when there are things which are not in our control and we end up in diseases that is when the medicine medical part of it comes into play so without realizing that most of us we are competing with the western medicine and we are trying to prove that we are equally good and uh, i think at some point yeah there are aspects which we can prove which we can fight for but i feel like uh, there are many aspects which we are we can give contribute to the society better than just being a medical science just give them give people a healthy life choices for a healthy life happy life so implement it live it and be an example also that is what my perspective is and so to give that uh, these aspects uh, dr agram sir has already shared so why i have to talk about it and uh, what made me come up with this topic so who am i is not from ramana maharshi's perspective that i'm still searching but this is my educational background and i'm practicing ayurveda since 2002 and i have this experience of a spa operation and management setting up wellness centers and uh, you know running operations and all and then whatever the difficulties i faced in setting up a center like that uh, and the challenges i faced uh, not only in india worldwide when i worked in different countries so that that's what made me i want to share this with my colleagues my ayurveda fellows so that uh, at least uh, i will get some support and uh, maybe uh, a community of ayurveda doctors and uh, ayurveda practitioners who will be enhancing their skill levels and then will be ready for the global demand which is upcoming so with that intention i wanted to talk about this i wanted to take this opportunity to spread this message so these are my work background uh, this is the book i have written so coming to the topic proper what are the opportunities in ayurveda we can do a lot of things but our thinking should change if we think only about clinical practice and teaching in a college then we will not be able to understand what is happening globally why ayurveda is becoming popular and now now that too with the ayurveda day you know yoga day everything being celebrated worldwide slowly and also the global uh, you know family being connected worldwide very easily we can communicate and talk to each other the interest in uh, various uh, alternate solutions is increasing worldwide because the western world didn't have these things but still then if you see traditional chinese medicine tcm it is one of the recognized systems in the usa and most of the countries so it is practiced as a, a system of medicine it is practiced as an alternative medicine also and they are you know regulatory boards also supporting them so how did they achieve that why ayurveda is still struggling so we will discuss these aspects so what are the opportunities there is awareness and acceptance about holistic health practices like ayurveda yoga you know naturopathy which is a combination of many things and chinese medicine and every eastern country they have their own traditional medicine system like thai herbal medicine indonesia has their own balinese herbal medicine so there there are different aspects to it and that people are looking for people from australia europe and us they are coming and looking for eastern healing systems because this is more 
of a healing system, not just a medical system. And it's a way of life that we practice in the East. And medical tourism, if you see, we cannot just say that, okay, ours is only service. We Any service or for that matter, anything that gets popular, we have to look from the commercial aspect also. And marketing is important in everything. Even if it is my small clinic, people have to know about my services. I should be able to market myself well. It should be ethically marketed and ethically practiced. That is there. There are two aspects of business. One is just business for money and there is ethical business. So that ethical aspect should be considered and medical tourism is getting popular. Medical tourism, uh, countries like Singapore and uh, Thailand, they are leading, but their limited resources and uh, uh, capabilities compared to Indian doctors is uh, giving more opportunity for India. So if people are coming for coming to India, mostly they come for what? Surgical care. And in Thailand, it is mostly cosmetic, you know, surgeries they come for. But in India, if they are coming for surgical care, cancer treatment and all that, how Ayurveda can capture that opportunity? That we have to think about. See, what we can offer, we can offer supportive care. We can offer rejuvenative care. We can offer, you know, detoxification program, cleansing, and, you know, we can make them realize the value of protecting our health. And also post-operative cares we can provide, rehabilitation we can provide. These are all the areas we can start We're taking a piece of cake from the medical tourism component. So if we want to do that, what we need to do, that we will discuss in coming slides. And then there is another area. There are a lot of products being launched and uh, propagated, marketed in the name of Ayurveda. But we as Ayurvedic fraternity, are we really in control of what is being sold? Are we really in control of the quality? I mean, we means uh, it may be our regulatory authorities and boards, everything, everything included in the whole system I'm talking about. So is the name Ayurveda being misused? We need to look into that and then we have to do ourselves authentic, authoritative people should get into this and produce products which are reliable, uh, authentic and made from the real pure sources of ingredients and of the top-notch quality. So then we can procure that opportunity also. And then there is a huge demand for teaching and consultation worldwide. There are many centers, clinics, yoga centers and even universities starting traditional medicine and uh, those aspects. Like we know uh, recently WHO also started in Jamnagar, the WHO World Global Center for Traditional Medicine. So these are the things happening worldwide. And if the, there is an opportunity, what we need to do, we have to be ready for that. Otherwise, someone else will be seizing it, grabbing that opportunity. So there are opportunities, but are they easy? There are challenges as well. See, authenticity concern. That's the first challenge. Which one, like the product or the person, you know, there are many Ayurvedic experts who have done three months, six months courses and they call themselves as Ayurveda experts. Or there may be numerous, you know, wellness coaches. Everybody is there and spreading. They are good in marketing. So they spread a lot and easily penetrate the market. Then what about the authenticity? There are so many Ayurvedic centers uh, where in the name of Ayurveda, they'll be just doing a massage. And there are so many people who are running Ayurvedic centers without even a doctor there, uh, Ayurveda expert, properly trained doctor. So authenticity is failed. And if they are propagating Ayurveda and sending wrong messages to the community, and we are losing that opportunity and that will bring a bad name to the whole field of Ayurveda. So how to do that? That's an authenticity concern, how to control that, grab that. And then regulatory hurdles. Different countries have their own FDA and the other regulatory bodies. And it's very tough to enter, penetrate and uh, uh, convince them about Ayurvedic practices and products. Uh, like in uh, Thailand, when I was practicing, I could only do the, you know, lifestyle and dietary advisors and all that. Or external therapy. Internal therapies, panchakarma proper or herbal medicines, we cannot give because getting approval for even one single product. Uh, let's not forget, uh, let's forget about uh, Chavanaprasham and uh, products like that with uh, multiple ingredients. Even simple Hingvastaka Churna or Avipatikara Churna, if I have to prescribe there, first thing is I cannot call myself as a doctor and practice. Second thing is then I, that product also needs a license. Licensing is a very tough job in those countries. So how to overcome that or how to get the support from our authorities, Ayush department and then get the licenses done. That will happen when there are bilateral, you know, treaties between countries, so, which is happening now. We can see that universities are tying up with uh, universities abroad and all that. Slowly, the opportunity is opening. But as of now, this is 
still a challenge and there are cultural differences what we think right for india indian community indian people even in india if you see south india is different people are different the culture is different north india is again different and the climate uh, every condition is different what you apply in south cannot be applied in north india of course in india it is said it is so diverse that every 100 kilometers or 50 kilometers you travel a lot of things change from climate to language to food to culture everything even kannada in hubli is different from mangalore people don't understand each other so that diversity is uh, <laughs> our cultures so ayurveda should be adopted to that cultural difference without diluting the essence that is what we have to uh, emphasize in every sentence don't compromise with the principles and there is competition standing out in the saturated market with many wellness alternatives so like i said there are so many alternatives coming and new age you know healing modalities are coming up so ayurveda has to prove again and again and stand stand out and be exceptional be useful so that is again another challenge but we have to lose our hearts we can change that impossible into possible so turning those challenges itself as opportunity that is what is important but you can see the person there he should not lose the balance otherwise he will fall down so while doing it we have to be balanced also matured enough so how to do that we need to standardize our practices see one abhyanga is given in kerala uh, maybe a center in kerala is different from what is given in delhi a center in kerala another center in kerala again different of course i am not saying that it ca- it has to be like mechanical robotic or anything but at least okay if it is vata pradana what how we can standardize that if it is pitta pradana how we can standardize that in what condition how we can standardize it. because even with uh, so many types of jwara our acharyas have standardized it, right in all sannipata jwaras they say if it is this 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 taratama uh, bhava then this is the prayoga so there was a practice of standardizing in ayurveda also which we are missing out somewhere and so standardizing whether it is practice or product we should standardize then we will be able to answer to the most of the queries and also will be able to practice worldwide and then collaboration we have to collaborate with various universities various organizations various bodies and then government and non government both should involve and it should be that kind of collaboration for everything research product development knowledge exchange all this internationally we have to do it then it is we can turn these challenges into another opportunity and we have to offer education and awareness to public or even to the experts like from other medical fields we we can even give them educational awareness uh, knowledge sessions and all that it is a slow process i understand there will be barricades there will be a lot of you know prejudices it is uh, difficult but not impossible that's what i mean and then we have to localize the things like if it is in germany we we cannot practice what we practice in here it may have to be adopted a little bit adjusted to the local needs but again as i always said while maintaining the authenticity if it's ushna and sheetha ushna and sheetha everywhere but the seasons might be changing so those things are there what what has to be changed what should not be touched upon that fine line we have to draw and then we have to progress from that but to do this are we ready how many of us are ready for this that is also a question like i mean we need a lot of manpower to do this if we have to collaborate and do then we need a lot of manpower and manpower with only the ayurveda you know college kind of study and knowledge will not be sufficient that is required but then we have to go into the depths of it and also develop other skills you know uh, parallel skills collateral skills all that is required like we need to continuously learn stay updated with the present trend in ayurveda and other health trends also what is going on worldwide what is coming up new and also about new technologies coming up artificial intelligence coming up so many of our job can be you know made easy by using all these technology sometimes like you don't have to keep remembering the tables when you have a calculator so use that time for something else so that that kind of approach also is useful ai will be very adaptive to ayurveda because computer can understand sanskrit like anything sanskrit is the best language for computer and ai because our uh, ayurveda is very systematically presented and it has everything defined predefined so ai can do very well with that so adapt to that 
adopt those things so that we can go to the next level cultural sensitivity so well while de delivering ayurveda as a product or service we need to understand that local cultural sensitivity how they are how adaptive they are we don't want to hurt their feelings sentiments they might have their own traditional medical system we don't want to say that it is bad this is good uh, we need to be careful about those things how to talk you know that's very important communication that is the next point i'm coming to so convey the ayurvedic principles very clearly in simple terms don't be too technical when you approach so that is important those skills we need to develop learn as many languages as possible if you can speak german french or spanish and you know russian then japanese then it will be much more useful you can reach to more people you can tell them what real ayurveda is there are so many theories so many you know notions about ayurveda which are wrong and they have been made popular so popular that people don't believe even when you say it. no ayurveda doesn't say like that For example one simple example i'll tell you people have made this as ayurveda is vegetarian always everything is vegetarian vegetarian is it true we talk about mamsa varga very clear it is but where to give when to give when not to give that has to be clearly told if there is no vata mamsakshaya and vata vriddhi then you don't need mams so that is the limitation and if you are on a sattvic path or if you are a meditator if you are in on yogic path then you don't need mamsa but ayurveda is vegetarianism why are we spreading that so those things we have to make them unlearn and then give them the real knowledge but with the limitations where it has to be given now, don't say again oh you can eat mamsa again that will be conveying wrong message where to eat where not to eat has been told so that should be stressed upon that is a to give this we need to develop communication skills language is required you know language skills and quality service with hospitality this we are missing in many of the places like i had seen in many of the centers the doctors working there or owning the center they themselves don't take treatment in their own center because they are not happy to lie down on the table which is oily sticky or smelling and all that so that quality has to improve i don't want to blame anybody it may be their you know limitations or the monetary they will be charging 100 200 for an abhyanga then how to you know every time clean and get the man power they have their own problems i understand but at some point we need to make it like at least basic you know sanitary hygienic levels and those things should be set as a standard and then uh um, the the hospitality you know we can't just say okay i am the doctor i tell you you do this that approach will not work in future i'm telling you because a uh, medicine is not only about what we give as you know a dravya there is adravya bhuta chikitsa also involved manas is very important component of it so making the mind open is very important in treating and healing ancient seers have told it clearly that putravat samapachare rogi should be treated as our own son so with that love and care and affection you know empathy everything should be there in that so if you have to do that you need that hospitality touch warmth hospitality care that should be expressed in our you know body language in our approach in our language everything needs and quality we should never compromise and then we need to develop this skill of networking connecting to people globally uh, with us. everyone and institution and definitely entrepreneurial skills to be an entrepreneur is not just like uh, okay you are running a business if you are doing business for money no entrepreneur is that one who looks into a, a problem and gives a solution from all the dimensions he looks into accounts he looks into hr he looks into management operations you know commercials profit and loss everything is looked into and then he comes up with a better solution and he always keeps evolving that is what an entrepreneur is he looks for opportunity and seizes it so that is required for everyone even a doctor sitting in a village clinic he needs that entrepreneurship because he has to run his own establishment as a clinic so that is important we cannot just say that uh, i am a doctor i don't know that i don't know this learn everything possible we need to know accounting we need to know you know technology we need to know a lot of things cooking for ayurveda so even that is important so we need to know multiple skills we need to learn all those and become an entrepreneur that is important so with all this discussion if we do a swot analysis what we have strength weakness opportunity and threat our strengths are we have a rich history and authenticity of ayurveda this no other medical or healing system has so ayurveda has got that kind of treasure so that is our strength and 
globally people are accepting it more and more everywhere there is an increasing demand that is our strength but our weakness as i said lack of standardization and potential dilution of authenticity in commercial ventures we dilute the concept we say panchakarma but we are doing only abhyanga or kiri and all that and we keep calling it as panchakarma such that is one of the examples so we are diluting the concept we and uh, unfortunately one of our client she had been going to some ayurvedic center uh, before and uh, this year she came to us and uh, then she wanted to do proper panchakarma uh, virechana and uh, when we started with uh, you know, deepana pachana and then sneha pana started and we had told her that you have to be restricted to the room you can go around in the room but you cannot sleep you can just walk around and uh, read for some time but don't do it uh, excessively don't strain your body or uh, organs excessively all that was told then she was surprised she started saying like last year i was in such place and before i was in such place they gave me gave me ghee and then there was a big lake they asked me to walk around until it was like 4 or 5 kilometers of walk after taking ghee so i was like this is how we do and this is how it has been told in classical text so we follow this because if you do that it is like uh, eating and doing exercise which is not recommended in uh, ayurveda or even modern medical science if you see eating and doing exercise is not advocated because blood circulation will be diverted and all that scientifically i explained and then she was convinced and she did that and got the result so that that that's where we need to explain to them in simple terms in their language in their way of understanding then they will be convinced but this is what dilution of authenticity is happening in most of the places and then we have this opportunities medical tourism expansion of ayurvedic products and what are the threats competition and regulatory challenges if we can overcome that then we can use the strength and opportunities very well so to conclude the way forward emphasize the potential of ayurveda in the global landscape how potentially we can do businesses how potentially we can bring in clients how we potentially we can help people see don't just think about oh he is talking about doing business business making money that is of course required but in the meantime we are helping people to live a healthier life and prevent diseases that is important so that they don't spend more on medicine medical care in future encourage continuous learning adaptation and innovation and definitely as i explained before collaboration communication quality service all these skill improvement skill development is very important unfortunately uh, it was a long time ago i would say when i was working in bangkok uh, i met a hotelier who was looking for his delhi ayurvedic center some doctors and he traveled all over india and then he was saying like i could not find a doctor who can communicate well and uh, explain things well so i was not convinced and can you find somebody for me so this is this was the situation now i think it is much better so hope it will further improve and then our our doctors our ayurveda experts will become more entrepreneurial in their venture and make ayurveda global and popular in the right way without compromising the authenticity so with those words i thank easy ayurveda and all of you for giving me this opportunity and listening patiently patiently to all my blabbering i hope it was useful thank you and thank you uh, thanks to dr prasanna sir a wonderful presentation it was like an eye opener uh, for many yeah young budding doctors uh, should know these things certainly and also uh, what's the way in what's the way out uh, as prasanna sir was rightly touching upon the opportunities and also the challenges of overcoming uh, that was not just uh, theory it was uh, this authentication authenticity is a word which uh, prasanna sir of often used so the presentation also has a lot of authenticity I I know Prasanna sir personally also. So he he uh, whenever uh, we have a talk, he adds value to these uh, topics. Has a lot of national and international exposure towards these things. That is why experience-based uh, uh, presentation in the global landscape where exactly we stand uh, and various facets of Ayurveda. What are the opportunities? How they open? So what's the closures? How we need to explore things and. Uh, move ahead and uh, that was a wonderful uh, eye opener and a good presentation uh, sir sir thank you for uh, that presentation on behalf of all of us now let's see uh, if we have some qua- questions in the question box uh, to start with uh, wasanth reddy madam has uh, raised hand uh, madam 
uh, you can go ahead and interact with uh, Prasanna's uh, your queries. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Prasanna. That was a wonderful talk. Oh, one of the challenges I have been reading about with uh, Ayurveda is heavy metals. I have seen umpteen number of papers published in international uh, peer-reviewed journals on uh, heavy metals and uh, they say you know 65 percent of ayurvedic medicine has lead arsenic mercury etc and i did not see any papers countering that and um, i understand that heavy metals are there in the environment at non-threshold levels you know just like how we get exposed to non-threshold x-rays right so ayurveda is such a wonderful system very helpful and we shouldn't miss out on it but how do you think we can help with these uh, heavy metal phobias is that really a legitimate uh, phobia or is it just uh, you know half-baked knowledge or no knowledge how do we deal with this thank you for bringing this up it's an important uh matter to discuss yes and propagate like uh, i was saying uh, propagation of the right knowledge is also important in this era it is partially true partially misunderstood mispropagated and uh, there might be a few lobbies working behind this also why partially true i say is like uh, you know standardization is missing in some of the aspects one of the aspect is in the preparation of the medicine itself so if they are not following if certain pharmacies are not following the classical method of preparation and if they are not completing the cycles like there are certain you know rasaushadis uh, the metallic uh, mineral preparations and uh, those if they are not completing the whole cycle of uh, you know incineration or uh, shodhana we call it as all that cleansing incineration potentiation all those aspects are if they are not completing it and compromising somewhere or trying to do alternative methods which are may not be as effective as the classical methods then there might be you know remnants of uh, those heavy metals which were supposed to be in the form of you know uh, oxides and uh, those things but and also like uh, you mentioned there may be some which are from the environment surrounding where the herbs are grown or the, where those uh, ingredients are procured from. There the environment might also be you know, rich in those and uh, th that has been gone into the product itself. And also standardization, testing, all those maybe there is some kind of, you know, to say bureaucracy playing and the proper testing is not done, uh, licensing without proper testing. There, there, there are so many aspects to it. If that is the case, then those uh, 50 to 60 percent of the products, what they're claiming might be right. I'm not saying that. Uh, we have to look into case by case. It may be just a claim or it may be a, a real problem. And the other aspects uh, of it is like maybe it is in a basma form and they are scared of that it is a metal which is there. But if it is a real heavy metal in the metallic form which was supposed to be in the basma oxide, then it is a wrong preparation method or it is a adulteration. So those are the aspects. So we'll have to, uh, as of now, what we are doing practitioners most of uh, the doctors here might agree with me that we are choosing products from selected companies we have to choose if uh, it, it may be the same medicine just uh, as an example if i mention chavanaprash if i want to give i may be choosing from one particular company or two companies or i might be preparing myself uh, in my clinic or home uh, because i'm scared to use from all the companies so that is because of lack of standardization, I would say. And there has to be regulatory, you know, strict measures, which in India regulation comes to make money, unfortunately. And still then we, it makes difficult for the genuine person who is preparing a genuine medicine to get the license. It is more difficult than the one who is preparing adulterated or non-classically preparing. He will be bribe the people and he will get the license easily. So that's. That's a problem. Who do you think should do this regulation? Do you think the government should take it up uh, or national Ayurvedic society people can take it up? Uh, who do you think can do take care of these regulations, number one? And the standardization you talked about, you know, I think the government should be responsible the, or the Ayur ministry should be responsible yes. for licensing and ensuring GMPs, etc. Yes. Um, yes. So uh, having said that, I have another question. So a lot of these Ayurvedic medications, the script on the, the labels is so tiny that we cannot see. I think there should be some regulation there. Um, the second 
thing is a lot of medications come without any package insert i think this will be a great place a great opportunity to educate people for for example you can write that there is a minimal amount of heavy metals provided it is of course um, mm-hmm. and whatever heavy metal is at the non threshold level so i think some level of patient education through these uh, medication package inserts can be really helpful what are yes. your thoughts yes yes it is uh, yeah uh, the ayurvedic community can uh, try and push or uh, you know uh, create this awareness and uh, at the regulatory level it becomes government bodies right and responsibility both because they are the authorities on that and we cannot do anything without their implementation regulation formation and all that so those bodies uh, i think they have to come up with better solutions and better packaging standards instructions and method of inspection approvals and all that yeah we are moving towards it it's not uh, that bad there is light at the end of the tunnel so but we don't know how fast we can reach there so it is happening a lot of uh, pharmacies are coming up with better you know standardization their own labs testing everything they are doing but that has to become a norm and uh, uh, all others should be you know curbed that's what uh, makes it better and safer thank you sir uh, swapna ji writes like uh, thanks for sharing the valuable info and experience curious to know how to face regulatory challenges as i am in usa as you said it's only allowed to do lifestyle education question number 1 i'll uh, i think swapna ji also has uh, another question i'll club it with it no regulation on availability of rasaushadas is a concern we can buy even without a prescription so these two questions from swapna ji prasanna sir your thoughts yes uh, we are still waiting and uh, hoping that it will c- come soon because it's uh, again uh, not in our hands and uh, i think if who is uh, convinced and uh, already they have established this uh, traditional medicine center in india and uh, so ayurveda can lead that traditional medical science and so if that comes into play and then they connect with fdas in various countries including the usa so th- that is when i think uh, regulatory at least they would there would be i think some norms where we can write an exam or pass that exam and then become a you know at least a health consultant and prescribe some herbal medicines so th- we have to look into how they achieved that for tcm traditional chinese medicine in usa so if that can be our guideline to how to proceed with that and uh, if we can achieve that then we will be able to practice more than lifestyle education and dietary education uh, in the USA or any other country as well so uh, one of my friend in australia he is a non ayurvedic practitioner or vaidya or anybody but he is a well wisher and uh, a devotee of ayurveda he is a retired uh, you know uh, army personnel and he was so interested bringing in bringing a full fledged ayurveda into australia he approached government two or three times in australia writing letters and with full details about what is ayurveda how it is practiced in india how many cases have been treated how it can help in ptsd and such disorders for those you know uh, armed forces you know, jawans people there but uh, the government was still not keen maybe in future soon after our uh, prime minister has tried and touched their heart maybe that will happen or our ayush ministry can become stronger and they can propose these things and uh, bring into that and the regulatory bodies in those countries uh, will slowly allow maybe rasaushadi will take much more longer time at least uh, if we can uh, start with uh, kasta ushadis then at least uh, we will start somewhere yeah, yeah and regulation on rasaushadi is very important but unfortunately not just the rasaushadis in india you can buy even steroids uh, in medical shops you just go and ask the person he will give without a prescription there was a, a, a few years ago it was made very difficult to procure any medicine schedule h drugs and all were not at all allowed but it was practiced for 6 months or a year after then it was back to square one like even now you go and buy any medicine without prescription it is still possible i mean talking about western modern medicine so rasaushadi is much far i believe much far okay <laughs> thank you sir uh, pragna ji has a question here she asks uh dr standardized uh, system is what the need of the time that you are mentioning standardized many times in your talk uh, prasanna sir totally agree so we have learned and understood ayurveda as an individualized system so how to make that shift that's a question also it's a practice 
Vaidya makes his formulation and the gives to people. We have seen the customization. And now, even though we have beautiful classical formulations, people are creating more and more formulations in the name of quality. And they are also approved. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, it's a very interesting and uh, important question because in the research also, whenever we do, you know, PG, PhD research and all that, in the protocol, I always uh, come up with this. We, I say that it is good to practice that protocol, but then for Ayurveda, we have to customize it. Likewise, the standardization cannot be like per kg body weight kind of standardization is not what I'm talking about. Standardization, if a person is Pitta Vata, then what? If it is Vata Pitta, then what? Vata Pitta Kapha, then what? With such kind of, I'm just, because Prakriti is a very popular topic in Western world. So I'm talking about this, but it's not, I'm not limiting to that. Uh, you can come up with all the, you know, Ashtavida Parikshas and all that. In that, you can mention if it is in this condition, this is what to be given, this is what to be given and all that. So the, that is how the standardization should be. What Abhyanga should be, how it should be performed, at least basic hygiene, uh, uh, duration required, what are the, you know, standard oils you can use. Th those are the some of the standardization possible. And uh, it, it is an evolving process. And slowly, what is not required or what is in excess that we can start removing. And uh, what is a basic requirement that we can keep as a standard everywhere. And then individualization, customization it will always be there. But that has to be, again, standardized you know, standardized to customize. So that's the beauty of Ayurveda. Like uh, when, if you read Samhita, say in general, this is the treatment line. Chikitsa Sutra is this. But if, but, uh, let's say, Jwara is with Shwasa, then this is the line. If Jwara is with Atisara, this is the line. Jwara is with Kasa, then this is the line. And you treat Kasa in that, again, you have to see whether it is Afaja, Pittaja, based on the Dosha, again, they give. So standardization was a practice even in the Samhitas. So that is the kind of standardization, not per kg body weight kind of standardization I'm talking about. We don't have to imitate, but we have to be clear on what we are doing. So to do that, and also you are saying creating more and more formulations are coming and uh, it is being approved. That is the commercial, totally commercial aspect of it. But a proper Vaidya with the proper no knowledge of Dosha, Dushya, and the srotas with the location, sthana and all. Uh, you don't, you may not need more than 10 or 20 medicines. That is how a proper Vaidya can practice. You don't need more than 20 medicines of all, like a few Aristas, few Kashayas, few Churnas and what is you might be keeping. And then some Swarasas, you might pick the leaves from the garden and you can treat. Uh, or from the kitchen, you bring something and treat. So that is how it can be practiced. So if there are more and more formulations, that means that we are uh, not very particular. We are not able to diagnose it properly. We are not able to pinpoint where exactly the medicine is required and how much medicine is required. So I think it's not uh, happening in a day or two, but it takes time. We need to educate our you know, future generations properly. And then we ourselves have to be convinced about pinpointing the diagnosis. Then we may not need so many medicines. So that's what I'm well, well said, sir. Uh, thank you. There a similar question uh, of uh, the similar magnitude again. Mara Kuminski has a question there again about standardization. Uh, so this question often uh, many people get, even the Ayurveda uh, people are working on it. Uh, so as you rightly said, there is customization in standardization and standardization in customization. Ayurveda is very popular uh, uh, in presenting Samanya and uh, Vishishta Chikitsa in its own uh, formats, and everything has been very neatly written in the classics. Uh, Again, we need to refer those things, know, have the knowledge and apply. The applied aspect is very important. Uh, how easy or how difficult it is uh, to standardize Ayurveda uh, and to what extent it can be done? So that's the question from Mara uh, Same thing you have answered. Uh, let's see if there is something uh, else to the question. So again, uh, question has an addition because it is said that there are as many Prakrutis as there are people. Again, we are speaking about permutations and combinations of the individuals according to Ayurveda. So there are general principles, but Prakrutis and Vikrutis are so different and unique from person to person. So uh, what is uh, the golden uh, line? So the, with underline, block letters with underline or uh, encircled from Prasanna sir. So is it more of standardization or more of customization? In this question, so see, we have different Prakrutis and Vikrutis during the 
though we have a uh, standard format for uh, chura or kasa or rakta whatever it is there seeing these different presentations in individuals of different age group different prakrutis different uh, sex groups and all those things uh, so what is the golden rule or the simple way of approach as ayurveda always does is about giving an example from the life in front of us uh, to explain what is going on inside so with that uh, if i give you an example or an situation there are so many plants there are so many plants in the world and uh, even in one variety one species of plant not all plants are same let's say coconut trees uh, my farm will be having 100 coconut trees in that all 100 are different but does, does it mean that every tree needs a, a very different approach or we do a one standardized formula to it so it is possible there are different prakritis as many people are there mm -hmm. likewise there are different conditions but there are general rules like you have to plant in this way that is one standardization you can do and then uh, watering the plant you have to water the roots so that is one simple general rule but how much water you may have to think about the season you may have to think about the size of the tree you may have to think about the nature of the soil and then you decide how much water to give but watering the root is first standard you have to set so that is how ayurveda standardization has to start we have to start somewhere I go to this clinic today, he starts Abhyanga from the feet first and then I go to another clinic, he will start from the head. So I am confused, my patients are confused, they say, okay, Abhyanga can be done in any which way. Some people even do Abhyanga Pratiloma. <laughs> so that basic standard I am talking about, that we have to set that as a standard everywhere you go, it will be in the Anuloma Gati based on the dosha. So if there is kapha dosha, what gati you have to give? If there is vata dosha, what gati you have to give? That kind of customization, standardization, this is what I'm talking about. So plant and then root, that, that you focus on. Watering from the root is common for all the trees, coconut or whatever tree it is. How much water you decide based on the season, uh, soil, all that. That is a golden line, I, I would say. Yeah, thanks there, Professor. Sir. But see, standardization, as you know, as uh, we've been seeing, standardization, uh, where exactly uh, this needs to be started with? See, because we have spent centuries uh, uh, towards Ayurveda. So Ayurveda is progressing. So that, uh, as we already said, it's it's in a progressive format itself. So more and more people are accepting the Ayurveda as a science. That's a good uh, positive sign. But when it comes to standardization, Again, many people have a lot of queries and a lot of doubts and debates about standardization is uh, made. So how uh, easy, again, the question is how easy or how difficult? And if it is to be made easy, from where uh, this standardization should start? Should it start from the schools of Ayurveda, like BMS itself? So in the clinical classes, the teachers should take the initiative and start telling that these medicines, see, uh, in the classroom itself, once they finish the final year BMS and come to the internship and they're working in the hospitals. So there itself, uh, take four doctors from the same, same department. We both belong to Kai Chikisa department. Me, yourself and two, three more doctors. So on a shift basis, students are working with each doctor. So for a same given disease, whether it may be a panchakarma therapy or uh, the Patya Patya or the Aushada, whatever it is there, we go according to our UT and go on explaining how these things should be. So at the end of the day, the student learning under six different teachers in the same department may have six different approaches when they go out of the institution and the practice. So should it be standardized among the teachers itself, among the doctors itself, like some small start with small tires and go on merging them into a big system at the peak, we at the summit, we have a standardized format. So it looks a very, very uh, difficult uh, cycle, this one. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Where to start? How to take ahead? If you can put it in simple words and uh, give a brief summary so as to it start progression and uh, where do you see? The, and when do you see this standardization regulations being met with? Maybe, see, at the government level, uh, it will take time and uh, it will take uh, a lot of effort to convince them and uh, implement things. So uh, like-minded people like this group, or Easy Ayurveda, or Ayurveda Simplified, or such groups of like-minded people can gather and start uh, putting down uh, these things, you know, noting down uh, where and all, uh, backed by the classical text. That is when we can substantiate it, like uh, how it has been not told in the classical text, develop on that, because 
classical text we would have given one sutra one line and then uh, after that uh, there is no description of it we may have to compile things from various sources and then also practitioners a lot of uh, practitioners who have been practicing for two three decades they might give a lot of insights collect all that what has been effective what was the problem in implementing this those things we need to collect and uh, you know document start documenting it uh, the basics we set as a standard then maybe another group will get in interested we exchange that thought maybe it should be like an open source like wikipedia we can create an ayurveda wikipedia uh, and then uh, share it but uh, someone has to be controlling that like uh, wikipedia you cannot write anything and everything they will approve it they have to scrutinize and then approve it. So maybe a platform like that can be created, use the technology and then collaborate collective effort and uh, maybe everybody can contribute and in that uh, we can uh, you know, regulate and uh, create a uh, wealth of knowledge. And then that is easily open source so anybody can use it. So our Samhitas have been open source always. So I believe in that. So let knowledge flow everywhere. Let knowledge come from everywhere. So with that approach, I think we can start working. Absolutely, sir. So things need to be started at the grassroots levels and grassroots itself for many. And uh, so choosing which grassroots to start with is difficult. Again, uh, it's it's difficult, but not impossible, as you rightly said. We need to uh, like uh, who should build the cat so that somebody <laughs> should take the initiation. So rightly said, Kajal ji has, uh, I think, a thought so rather than a question, pharmacies like Dooth Papeshwar provide package inserts in all their medicines. I think it's related to the talk given by, uh, like the question by Vasanta Reddy Madam. So like uh, the, the things are visible in a, a minute way. Uh, what's your thought on this uh, inserts, uh, uh, Dr. Prasanna sir? So like, uh, uh, should uh, even, even people are fair enough, as you said, medicines can be purchased on the counter, including steroids. Leave apart Rasul Shadas and even the cast of Shadas, people know. So be, there are Google experts uh, who know things and who have read things who are not have nothing to do with Ayurveda, not even taken a single consultation about Prakriti or whatever. So uh, with the with the doctor, or they have heard somebody from the family or friends telling that I've taken A, B, C, D, Ayurveda medicines and I'm feeling good with it, and they go ahead and purchase it from the counter. And uh, more information is provided in the leaflets uh, with the medications they read and uh, become experts and they start advising too. So this is a parallel Ayurveda school running over there. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, no, I'm not uh, endorsing any company here, but uh, the practices uh, from Dhuth Papeshwari is something I consider like a, a good step towards uh, standardization because they don't just give it like a, a, a medicine with no proper information. They give classical reference and description and then complete uh, information that is meant for medical practitioners actually but uh, somehow because it is going into the bottle so i think it is uh, going into the hands of the patient also in a way it is good to educate them and uh, we cannot control the google doctors google you know knowledge that we cannot control but uh, what we can implement is uh, yeah, improve I include this kind of information inserts more and more information on the product as much information as possible on the you know do's and don'ts especially that that we need to include in the medicines and uh, give a clarity on and uh, write in bold terms that this has to be taken with the medical prescription from an ayurveda doctor that has to be written uh, of course anything written uh, it's not mandatory that they follow it but still it is our duty to do it you can only warn them apart from that you cannot stop them you know they should understand regarding the standardization uh, i think it's a very a difficult thing to happen there has to be a political lobby for it and also uh, ha on have national conferences where you you have the focus on standardization uh, in ayurveda be done and that way uh, you know as a collective intellect you come up with uh, these uh, standardizations. Otherwise, you know, just communicating with students or communicating between uh, peer uh, doctors may not be uh, sufficient. That's that's what I wanted to say. Yes, th th that's true. But uh, we have to start somewhere. And uh, so maybe this will be inspiration to uh, the government bodies to do something about it. Or maybe at least a few centers will start doing it, you know, uh, at least uh, a few centers will uh, be in the same standard wherever they go they will see that this basic is followed everywhere it becomes popular and then maybe the government bodies will be pushed to do it 
so that is our inspiration here positive note <laughs> absolutely sir small small initiations can make a big difference and also game changes uh, many times so let's see where uh, this goes so far uh, we are having a healthy discussion on this uh, jay raguji has a question i remember dr gurraja sir quoting gurraja sir jay raguji tells saying when basma is given the anupana or medicines with the basma get the basma out of the body after its action has been complete uh, i think that knowledge needs to be spread your thoughts on that sir yes that is one possibility because uh, like uh, the uh, basmas are used as carrier for the uh, medicine herbal medicine uh, molecules so that is one of the theories and uh, you know uh, assumptions we take it uh, but again uh, that knowledge needs to be spread and uh, with the right uh, you know evidence for that uh, if we are talking about it then we will have to show some evidence for that so yeah my tissue study culture study or you know my, uh, nowadays uh, all the technology we can use and maybe we can even show where the molecule is moving and which cells or tissues it is acting and then the excretion of it happening if we can do a study like that and show it with the proof yes we can do that yeah thanks the professor sir again uh, pragati shetty ji has a question here uh, so as you were mentioning certain loopholes and also some limitations uh, which are there uh, because of these loopholes itself the western uh, system is considering ayurveda as a pseudo science uh, what's your thoughts on this and uh, how to go about this do we have any control on those thoughts <laughs> um yeah that is a very vast topic in itself pseudo science and uh, wikipedia itself quoting ayurveda as a pseudo science and even dr ramanor sir my uh, i respect him a lot uh, he is also trying and writing about it and uh, he has written a letter to wikipedia foundation also i believe uh, and uh, th those efforts are going on parallelly but it is not only because of the loopholes or our weaknesses it is because of the you know uh, uh, we are not uh, presenting it in the right way which can be the loophole we are talking about here and also uh, there might be a few lobbies working against ayurveda becoming a biggest uh, you know opportunity holder in the global herbal market the herbal market is the thing it's a few billions of uh, dollars industry in which uh, tcm is also fighting and uh, their own naturopathy and other herbal medicines are fighting so that is where i think uh, that has been quoted thank you very much sir and a uh, couple of uh, thoughts coming the way again vasant reddy madam i'll just read out uh, written some words which uh, are important developing algorithms for individualization and the captain the database can probably <coughs> contribute to standardization and use yes this uh, okay. however may have to be done by a national body for authenticity and harmonization of uh, treatments yes, it's a big chain uh, which needs to operate at different levels dr madhav digavi sir uh, compliments good presentation sir congratulations yes standardize uh, to customize <laughs> samita are standardized but uh, current market problems are very peculiar and challenging prescription based ayurvedic practice is difficult prescription based ayurvedic practice is difficult yes yeah. sir yes uh, that, that is where i said like uh, when we try to compete with the modern medicine medical system and trying to prove that we are better than the modern medicine or any competition in that uh, and trying to fit into those uh, you know uh, molds that is where we might uh, face the problem if we think that we are a life science and we are uh, here to you know teach how to live and um, i always say ayurveda need not be learned only by doctors or aspiring doctors especially the first part of ayurveda is for everybody all common people all people should learn especially mothers should learn this and teach to their kids and then that is how we will build a healthy generation which pharma world will not accept that uh, healthy generation is there and uh, pharmaceutical companies have to close down their billions trillions of dollar industry so <laughs> that is where uh, uh, we have to change our approach and also we need to create this kind of awareness that ayurveda is not just for you when you are sick we i am not a doctor running a clinic only when you are sick i am here to teach you about life how to be healthy and happy so that is that is where ayurveda comes into the, the prescription based uh, practice will not be there and so that won't be difficult right sir yes, yes. uh enquiry eha has uh, raised the hand please go ahead and ask so the question. doctor you just said that the 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 pharma industry is you know 
uh, threatened by our thing but i also feel like in our ayurveda now it's becoming like a pharma industry people are so many companies are coming up with the ayurvedic formulation even like some of the people who comes here and they bring their sample and they wanted to sell something which they don't know how they've made so how does that can be controlled because we don't know we are sitting here in us we don't know how they've been made there who how can we trust that also because it is becoming a pharma industry here for with ayurvedic medicine also there are so many companies come up so i wanted to know how do we recognize what is the best and how how they are making or what the products are they using correct way of making it or not otherwise it will be like a pharma we don't know we just prescribe yes that is where again this applies there when we try to be become becoming and you know another medical industry that's when uh, the pharmacies will become another pharma you know first place they are calling themselves as pharma only uh, even herbal ayurvedic pharma they call it as so the pharma is always an industry and their motive is to sell maximum medicines and if you see even if you attend an ayurvedic conference there will be stalls with all the pharma companies ayurvedic pharma companies and all stalls will have almost similar same medicines one for the respiratory system one for the digestive system one for the sleep one for uh, you know liver like that it will be the same but with a different combination a little up and down they will make permutations and combination and uh, syrup and tablet and powder that it's that, so that's true all and come. that confuses us yes uh what i've learned from some of one of the best doctor over here who has started our with a doctor lad i'm sure you must have heard about it he never said to use the formula he mm. used to give us a powder combination how do we do the powder combination that was the main thing to learn but now because everywhere even you know if you question somebody from india doctor they are giving you a formulation so we don't know anything about it how does it works what it is then basically you study the formulation which is also another area you need to do which is confusing for us so it's a balance like we should not be just a medical science and we need to come back to our originality and then use medicine as a next part of it first thing is to about life and then that prescription practice and this pharma practice being an industry to sell just medicines that should be reduced the less medicine that that best doctor is the one who gives less medicine who removes more medicines you know removes all those from the list so that is what we need to come to and we try to give more of a healthy lifestyle and make them healthier not make them sick and uh, give more medicine so we need to change our perspective thank you very much for your great explanation thank you uh, swapna ji uh, mentions like hetu vyadi marga samprapti khavai gunya prakriti vikruti etc screen for customization rather than standardization in my uh, opinion and uh, kavita ji uh, mentions it should be a part uh, as part in our basic education basic education we are speaking about uh, uh, things to inculcate and uh, rightly introduced at uh, the basic education level your uh, quick thoughts on this yes sir see uh, this is customization i definitely agree but are we customizing with the same standard let's say one patient comes to my clinic i cust i customize something and then i give a prescription the same day same time if he goes to another doctor is he able to customize in the same manner is the same person in the same season same time within you know matter of uh, let's say 5 minutes In, in this clinic and that clinic is it customized in the same way if not then there is a lack of standardization customization to that person in that condition has to be done in a standardized way that is what we are talking about and uh, that is important otherwise they, they, they won't believe us they won't believe us because they will say oh, okay everybody is uh, doing their own thing it is not customized it is not even customization proper because there is no you know rule do customization but in the samhitas there is rule for every customization also if it is in this because of this hetu this is the uh, approach if it is this vyadhi marga this is the approach is this is the samprapti then this is the samprapti vigatana if this is the khavai gunya then this is the you know bringing back to normal if this is the prakriti then this is what we need to do so that kind of standardization is there 
customization should not be a, a method of escaping so that's what i mean to say yeah so customization and standardization are two sides of the same coin as you said uh, so we need to see each from each perspective and uh, try to see uh, how much as i said simplified ayurveda can be made to uh, for a common man and how complicated it shouldn't be made for the ayurveda students and uh, ayurveda enthusiasts whoever wants to learn ayurveda so it's it's a uh, high time like uh, the newer generation uh, keeping up the authenticity uh, your world so of ayurveda without uh, uh, meddling with uh, the basic core and also essence and soul of ayurveda uh, we need to see how best and how simple ayurveda can be made for future ayurveda doctors to understand and practice and for uh, the consumers like uh, the patients and other people how easy format it can be made so like be it customization or standardization ultimately the two objectives of ayurveda should be uh, met with uh, in the simplest uh, possible way as we've been mentioning about ethical business and also ethical practice uh, those things are so wonderful and uh, not diluting the essence so that's very important and uh, yeah so before we end up uh, swapna ji has mentioned i think uh, appreciate your thoughts on it uh, regulations have been proposed in canada for herbal supplements bill c47 vanessa's law etc are uh, making difficulty of availability and prescribing appreciating your uh, thoughts on it uh, appreciate your thoughts on it yeah it's just because some yeah. some batch of medicine might be wrong and it has been detected with those you know wrongful uh, uh, contaminants and all that so what happens is the even the right medicines get hindrance and uh, all the troubles entering the market so that is a pain coming with uh, you know uh, the, those uh, malpractices done by somebody somebody is mistake someone else is paying so that is bound to happen because one batch of coffee was exported to uh, us uh, very long back and in that uh, the very low quality coffee was there and then after that i think for 5 or 10 years they were not importing coffee at all from here so th that is how it affects so that is where uh, it should be controlled within then while exporting the good quality medicine will go there and there will not be any problem and then we will be able to procure medicines easier so uh, time has to answer it and i think uh, collaborations of governments and non government organizations all together can answer this but uh, first of all uh, in this customization and standardization we should be open enough to accept that i don't know to say that i don't know maybe i am lacking it i will learn i will do it so that's when i think we will start somewhere otherwise if i think that i know everything and i am what i do is the best and i am standardized then i think we will go nowhere we will still be in our own cages so open up and uh, accept that we don't know and then that's when it will start absolutely sir i know everything is a point of saturation and uh, nothing saturates nothing is uh, statistically 100% uh, accurate so it's a learning process if uh, be it a teacher be it a uh, student whoever it is there so i'll refer and tell i don't know this uh, so let me see uh, if i can help you in some way or even better is referral so if if it doesn't belong to my department i shall refer it to another department so the egoism should be uh, cut short there so like uh, we need to be open enough to accept so that uh, we are not master of everything so that that is also uh, a good approach so thanks uh, there sir and uh, to sum it up so at the end of the session it was a wonderful brainstorming session uh, uh, after a uh, thought provoking uh, presentation from uh, professor nasr on ayurveda really taking ayurveda, ayurveda beyond borders uh, having different in ayurveda through different lenses uh, with uh, professor nasr's presentation in india outside india what are the opportunities and uh, what are the challenges in the global landscape as uh, the title uh, suggests so it was a comprehensive topic and the need of the hour for us all to discuss this particular topic and uh, a big thanks to prasanna sir so from uh, easy ayurveda team easy ayurveda and family easy ayurveda and from all the participants for such uh, a wonderful presentation uh, thank you and uh, a big thanks uh, once again from all of us prasanna sir thank you so much sarve bhavantu sukhina thank you thank you sir thank you for those wishes uh, for uh, the well being of all of us and uh, big thanks again to all the participants and easy ayurveda family and namaste to all